Hey guys, welcome back to the Tarsha Homestead again. Um, today we're going to tackle some of that barn again. Um, so when we left off, we had done the last two posts on the right-hand side, and there was still that one rotten one on the left-hand side, and then the two middle ones in the front. I don't think I'm going to do the middle ones in the front yet, even though they're super easy, because uh, I feel like I have a weekend ahead of me that I might just be able to get the worst done, so I might as well tackle that uh, rotten one. There's going to be a whole heck of a lot of rebuilding that I have to do of the joist. Um, joist isn't the right word. Of the truss and the rafters that are there. Plus, they all land on the header. And I, they call that a header or is that a nailer? I don't remember. It's the top board that goes on top of the posts. Um, that's rotten and gone. And so when we get up there, you'll see that the whole roof on that one truss is basically sitting on this much good material. Uh, the rest of it I could break off by hand. And so the whole bottom um, spreader on the on the truss is literally floating. I can grab it with one hand and just shake it like that. So we're going to try to tackle that today, get that thing secure. Um, I had hoped to do some work on our sign. We had a sign made and I made a uh, stand for it to put out by the street. But the varnish on here, spar urethane, is still a little sticky. So it's not quite ready yet. Uh, lastly, I'm just going to, uh, don't mind the shop being a mess. It is a disaster right now because we have so many projects going on, but I'm just going to start grabbing tools and load them up. All right, guys. So I climbed up this scaffolding, um, and I'm not ready to start work yet, but I just wanted to show you just how bad this is. So this brace right here is definitely holding, um, and that's what goes up across this truss, right? Now let me come back down here and here's the like separator of the truss and ooh, I broke that off by hand like I just reached up and grabbed a hold of it and just like broke chunks off um, so this is just all rotten and that would have come all the way across over here and you can see just how bad that is half of that truss has gone there and that seems to be the only thing that's still holding it right there and you can see this top plate is trashed as well so I have all the material to replace this entire top plate, to replace this post, and then to sister up all the boards on this truss. Um, so most of my day, I think, is going to be construction work, just like um, what I plan to do is a lot of stuff like uh, cut this off here, cut a new piece for there, butt it up against there, sister in a piece, screw them together, do the same thing on the other side, that sort of thing with each one of these ones that are missing until I get a nice solid truss and until I get a nice solid truss I'm not gonna do any adjustment of load um, once I've got a nice solid truss then I've got this post temporarily right here that I will stand up underneath this truss to lift the load off so that once I get the load off I can build the new top plate put it in place and then uh, replace this post so it's gonna be a lot of work all up here on the scaffold. I just want the building to not fall down and uh, to not continue to rot away. So um, that's my goal for right now. If I get that done and I manage to get this post done, that'd be an awesome day. Um, but then the next piece is looking towards the front, right there across the front. That was open because they needed that, that room. I don't need that. I'm gonna close that in. So. Um, this post is obviously going to come out and be replaced with a 6x6, six six, but that whole top plate, I'm going to take that out and replace that with a full length top plate. And then I'll have a post here and a post here, and that will support the front. And then the sheeting, when we get the sheeting, will go across the front there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be ready to start doing siding. So, yeah, um... Right now, I'm just going to uh, warm up a little bit, and then I'm going to get out here and start cutting and cleaning these edges up so that I can start sistering in boards. Eek. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is the most awkward camera angle ever. <clears throat> but I'm up on a scaffolding, and there's no stinking room. And I want you to see a little bit of what I'm planning to do. But a lot of this is probably going to have to be filmed from the ground because this just won't do. There's no room to work here. But... I'll make a couple cuts just so you can kind of see what my plan is, and then we'll go from there. Give me a second to come over here and get my circular saw. Whew, you're probably not even going to be able to see it because I'm probably going to be standing right in front of it, but I'll do the best that I can. My goal is to kind of cut this off 
right here. All right, there we go. Now you get the idea. So now it's a fresh edge and I'll be able to cut a piece in that'll go across the distance. So now you've seen the general idea of what I'm going to do. I'm not going to record every step along this part of the process because it's just too awkward up here on the scaffold. There's only like two feet by six feet maybe. So I just can't have the camera right here. It's just not working for me. But maybe I'll do some filming from the ground or I'll bring you back up here as I make little steps of progress. Like I'll get these cut off and then I'll get my wood cut and I'll put it in place and then I'll come up and video some of that. That way you can be along for the process without being in my damn way. All right, bye. All right, here's my first of the assemblies. So this is going to replace the bottom spreader or tie in to the bottom spreader. And then I've got the two sisters that are going on the outsides of it. I just got that one in the middle just to keep a proper distance. And then I'll do the top. Um, I've already got them cut but I'm questioning whether or not my math was right, so I'm not gonna put those in yet. I'll do those in place, which will make for a little bit more difficult cutting up there on the scaffolding, but I think it's the right way to make sure we get it right. There it is all sistered in now. I've got the uh, bottom stretcher done and then I've got the uh, rafter put in and I've sistered them the best that I can. I'm gonna come back on a couple of these and throw some bolts all the way through so that I can use nuts on the other side to really pull them in tight. But uh, I think that'll do the trick now. I'm pretty sure that this uh, diagonal brace right here is the only thing holding that up. Uh, and I'm fairly confident about that because the top plate is totally rotten and the uh, uh, rafter was rotten as well. So next up, I think I'm going to try to get this post up underneath here and lift off some of the weight. And then I have to get in here and start working on that top plate, which is all rotten out. But it's also what all these rafters are sitting on. So I'm a little concerned about how to do that without having them fall out. So I've got some tinkering to do up there and figure that out. But first things first, we'll be getting this pole in just like I did with the other ones. I got some stuff stacked under it. I've got it holding up the weight and it appears as though it's actually, I'm not certain if you can tell, but it appears as though it's actually lifted up off of the um, support. So um, I'm going to go get up on the scaffolding and have a peek and figure out what my next steps are. Okay, this is, um, I don't know the word for it, but it makes me a little bit more comfortable because now these rafters are kind of floating, as you can see, which, I mean, is technically kind of dangerous, but what it does is it means that I've got support here holding up the weight so that I can start working on figuring out how I'm gonna replace this top plate. I might have difficulty over here. It seems like it's still resting pretty solid over here, 
but for over here I think I might be able to get some replacement done. Um, now I just got to decide if this post needs to come out first or after. I'm leaning towards after. It would sure be nice to get this cross brace out of my way. Maybe I'll cut this off and then yeah if I cut this off then maybe I can get up here and start tearing out this wood as much as I'm capable of doing uh, from where the scaffold is and uh, see what I got to work with there. camera died on me so I didn't get to get some of this but I've got that piece in there and then I've got the rest of the rock pulled out that was kind of a nightmare um, but I got all of that out so there's no top plate there at all you can kind of see how rotten the tips of the rafters are um, which isn't surprising because that eave is all broken off it's only hanging from a couple screws in the tin right now um, so I'm just trying to stay away from underneath it um, but I've got my next section right here and uh, ready to go in there and I have to climb up there and put it in. And then I do the same thing for a second layer, overlapping the seam in the middle. And once I get that done, then I can replace this post. I'm not going to record this because I don't have enough battery, so I will just check back in after I get that done and you guys will see kind of what, uh, what it took to replace all that. Shoo! Okay guys. Wow. Good video etiquette would say that I would turn the tractor off and the 
log splitter off and try to get some good audio but guys i'm pooped and i don't want to so here's the deal i did my uh like i showed you earlier i did my sistering of the joist and i've now replaced that entire top plate you can see it's wonky but that's just because this uh post is too high right here so these aren't being able to set down on there um, as soon as i pull this post out all will be right with this and i'll come back and screw it down there but uh yeah so now it's all sistered in um, the last thing to do is going to be to come in with some joist hangers um, brackets and really tie these down. I think they're called hurricane clips or something like that um, and get those tied down properly because right now they're just kind of sitting there. I'm, I'm done. I can barely lift my arms right now. This project has been an interesting one. It's like uh, really kicking my butt, but I don't know why. Like, I mean, it's a lot of exertion, but man, my, my muscles just aren't recovering the way they used to. So... I think I'm just getting old, and I don't like it, and uh, it needs to stop, damn it. All right, that's enough complaining. Check out my hot wife. All that wood that she's doing over there, getting it all stacked. Yeah. Busy day on the homestead here, so I'm going to shut it down for the night. I'm going to go get a hot shower and, I don't know, cold soda, take a nap, go to bed. I don't know. We'll see. But either way, more tomorrow. See ya. Hey guys, so it's day two, and uh, I'm feeling a little bit more refreshed, although I am wearing a wrist brace today, which is new. Uh, so we've got our sistered-in repairs for the truss, and we've got our double top plate completed. And you can see it's all wonky, but this is a really old building. So, um, But I was able to get all the rock out of here, which is fantastic. So. What I'm going to do now, I got a quick wall, uh, Home Depot run in. I got a bunch of hurricane straps that I'm going to put on all of these rafters. And once those are in, it's time to take this post out. All right, guys, so if you look close, you can see my hurricane straps are all in place on there. I've got all the rafters tied down. And so now I'm feeling pretty comfortable about it being time to uh, put some lifting force on those uh cross braces that I bolted onto that temporary post. And once I've got that lifting force on there, I can put a cut with the chainsaw on this post and start working on getting it out of there, just like I've done with the other ones. So I'm gonna reposition the camera, take a few minute breather, and then we'll get to work on that.
Okay, we got that final post in and Emily came out and helped me and we got that first row of the girt put up. And uh, now we're gonna start doing all the rest of the girts. We made a couple spacer blocks. You can see that spacer block sitting right on top there. And we'll start using that for getting row after row completed. I'm pretty confident we could, if we were motivated, finish this side a day. But I imagine once it gets above height that we can reach, that's probably about as high as we'll go today. Okay, so we're calling day two done. I got that post replaced over there, which was the big primary plan for the day. We started on the girts. Um, I broke a girt and then uh, I dug the holes and got these two posts thrown in. Uh, this post, the one closest to us, is off by about six inches. So I gotta redig that hole. I have no clue how I messed that up, but I did. So we'll fix that and then uh, use the tractor to reposition it. And then we should be in really good shape as far as um, time to finish putting up the girts and then doing siding. That's not just the typical hardware store corrugated metal. So got some work to do finding some of that. We found it used on Marketplace before, so I'll just keep looking. And eventually we'll find some and I'll buy enough pieces to repair all of that over there. And then I will build a new eave. And uh, yeah, we'll be in dang good shape. That metal on the back is probably going to come off as well and get replaced with T111 also, so it'll look uniform all the way around. But now it's a nice square, firm, concreted end building with hurricane ties up on the rafters and no more rot anywhere up along that top ridge cap, and or not ridge cap, but that top uh, nail plate. And I'm really excited to start building out the interior on it. So I'm I'm hoping to crank on this siding as soon as we get those last two posts in and just crank it out real quick. Our new flatbed trailer over here is really going to make that a lot easier. I'm going to go and just pick up something like uh, 56 sheets of T111 and just have them bring it out on the uh, forklift and set it right on there. I'll throw straps on it and bring it right home. Be able to pull it off with the tractor and go around and put them in place. So I'm excited to do that, but uh, we're at end of day Saturday or end of day Sunday um, and it's time to go make some Mississippi pot roast and uh, because it's back to the old grind tomorrow for my real job um, this is where we're stopping for the weekend so I think this will make a good little part two video so where part one was um, preventing collapse part two will be all about uh, removing and replacing the rot and starting the girding so I'm excited for it and you can kind of see from the front this is gonna be a nice building it's got it's got a lot of work to get there but it's going to be a nice building thanks for following along thanks for checking out the Tarsha homestead please hit the bell subscribe all of that jazz and we'll see you in part three